take two. This is a video about how to grow food fast. And this is a reaction to this little thing here that's going around. I don't want to even say it because uh, the bots will probably shut it down or restrict it somehow. That's just called the C word. Because I believe people are going to be interested in growing food fast. Okay. Before we get into the ingredients of how to grow food fast, we're going to draw out two little properties here. We have the outside in property, and then we have the inside out property. Okay, the outside in property, it has to receive inputs. We have inputs going into the property, and those inputs in aggregate produce the outputs, which in this case is food. Get that on a screen. Okay, we have things like uh, fertilizer and, you know, chemicals of one type or another. And, you know, seeds and fuel. If we are missing any of these inputs, we're probably not going to be growing a crop on that property. That property has been conditioned to all these four, and it takes a heroic effort to flip that property from an input to an output property, or an inside-out property, as I want to call it. And this inside-out property, everything is produced inside the property. One measure we can make is produce compost. We can have animals that have a function. We can attract wildlife in that's going to bring functions into the property. And we can recycle all the nutrients. And this is going to produce our, our output, our inside out property. Okay, now the two ingredients that we need to start with one is water and the other has to be compost now the order of importance depends on your location if you're an arid area you're going to want to be worried about the water first if you are in a cold climate or a moderate climate area you're going to want to be making your compost first because you're going to have regular rainwater fall and that's going to be on a regular basis so you don't have to store as much. Now when it comes to water, we want to be harvesting rainwater. And the reason for that is if you get it from the city, they have chemicals in it that kill bacteria. And part of this inside all property is you are encouraging soil life and it's the secretions and the dead bodies of the soil life that our crops are going to be feeding from and if you bring in city water you're going to affect that soil life and even if you're going to take water from underground there are heavy elements or even sometimes radiation coming out of that water so I mean although that's probably better than city water um, rain water is better and even with the wells that you're drawing water up it requires electricity so that's another input we want to reduce the inputs lower them to close to nothing or nothing and well water requires an input requires electricity from off-site now some people are talking about rainwater so oh yeah well some of that's polluted well so is the air that you breathe in if you're acclimated to the air then the rain is not going to be a problem to you and in compost, we want to be looking at producing aerobic compost. 
And I have videos on how to make aerobic compost. I will uh, link you to one of them that is a series of videos. It's not a short series. Each video is 20 to 30 minutes. But I'll give you a quick one here as to how it is on paper, how you make it on paper, so you don't have to go through it. It's just hours and hours and hours of video there. But, you know, if you were locked in because of this C word here, if we get locked in, you may have the time. <laughs> okay. Um, a very short, simple instruction on how to start farming your property. If you have, uh, most of us have long grass. It's just a simple, simple matter of taking a shovel. You got a shovel, and you're going to go backwards, shoveling out a trench. You're going to walk backwards as you're shoveling the trench. So this is the trench right here, and you're turning the soil over onto the spot right here. There's going to be a mound right here, and you're going to turn it over so it's upside down. So the trench is going to become your garden path, and the mound is going to become your garden bed. And you're just going to keep doing that, one after the other. And if you have access to cardboard, and you probably still do now, cardboard or newspaper, I mean, at some point, if, if this really develops into something really bad, I mean, even this is going to become scarce. But you're going to cover this in, in cardboard or newspaper. These are your garden beds. So you have your garden beds here now. It's all covered in cardboard or newspaper, and that's to stop the grass from getting sunlight and growing. And you're going to make little holes in this newspaper, and that's where you're going to plant your seed or your crops. That's the fastest way you can do it, right there. You can start that right now. Actually, that should be the green color, right? <laughs> Yeah, well, if you want a Hollywood production, you'll have to tune in somewhere else, I guess. So, um, over time, that's going to be reduced, so it might even be good to put a layer of straw over top. Now, if you have a lot of rain, what happens is, is the slugs really take off. So, you're going to have to monitor this. If you're getting a lot of rain, you're not going to want to use straw, and you're going to maybe re slow down using newspaper and cardboard, or, or at some point, you're just going to pull it away and let the mound dry out. Or if you're not getting a lot of rain, well, then that's perfect. You're going to have the soil covered, and it's not going to dehydrate. Now, you're going to have a really good first year. I'll guarantee you you'll have a good first year doing this. First year is going to be a good, good growth. Second year, it's not going to be so good. It'll be okay. First year is good. Second year is not so good. It is okay. Third year is when the production really drops. Okay. You can bank on this. I know this by for a fact. So now you're going to have to be thinking about this aerobic compost. You don't have to do it exactly right away, but you want to get a system going so that you know how to make it. And that's what the video series that I'll link in the description is about. And I also have a um, I think I have a video way back. I'll have to look it up. Oh, if, I, if I can find it, I'll put it in the uh, description as well, where I actually take a piece of grass and turn it into a garden bed. You'll be able to see that. So I think that's good enough for here. We don't want to do this. We really, really, really want to do this. Okay, I stay within these lines here. And I stay on the video. I think that's what it is, right? A little bit higher. There we go. Right, okay, a little bit lower. <laughs> All right. We have three main ingredients. One is carbon. Now that should be in brown, shouldn't it? Carbon. We have three main ingredients. One is carbon. That's probably the most important ingredient that you can add to uh, to your soils carbon and I'll do a quick pyramid here to show you why at the top the most important is carbon if you don't have carbon nothing else below is going to react with 
the carbon. And then you have NPK. Then below that you have 12 main minerals. Below that you have 24 trace minerals. And the main minerals are like iron and calcium. And then getting into trace minerals, some of them I don't even know. And even below that, there are like 50 subtrace minerals. And everything relies on going through the cycle, the recycling process, based on carbon. So in our aerobic compost, that's what we have here is aerobic compost. That's how you spell it. That means with oxygen. That means we do not want this compost, as it's working, to squeeze the oxygen out and turn anaerobic. That's what we want to deal with here, aerobic compost, aerobic. So again, the first ingredient was carbon. The second ingredient would be greens, stuff that hasn't dried out. It was alive, and you still have the life force in the, in the product, so the greens. Now, I've gone a little bit beyond what you would think of as greens, and all winter long I've been saving our kitchen scraps. Even eggshells and can be considered in this process. And all of the, you know, when you trim your vegetables off and you wash them, and all of that material I put into a barrel outside. And through a stroke of luck, I found out that it ferments in there throughout the winter and in the spring. And when you go to use it, it's in this permanent fermented state. And it's greens, and the bacteria there is there in those greens, and that's why you want to use greens. That gives you the bacteria. That'll kick the pile off, get it heated up. Bacteria, that aerobic bacteria that's going to eat the carbon and eat the next ingredient, which is manure. That would be the nitrogen. component. You, you need to have carbon interacting with nitrogen. The greens also have ni nitrogen and carbon together. So you want to get the carbon and the nitrogen to react. If you don't have carbon, you aren't going to get the reaction. If you don't have ni nitrogen, you aren't going to get the reaction that you want. And you're going to basically divide this into one-thirds. And you want to have at least one square yard all together. I've never done just a one square yard pile. It's all been three square yards where I'm doing one square yard of each ingredient. Now when you build your pile you're gonna mix it a wheelbarrow at a time. Basically what I do is I have my greens all sitting there and my barrels all ready to go. Or if I'm building one in the summertime, I just go get them and harvest them out of my wild areas and bring them in. But in the springtime, I don't have much right away. I'm using just the barrels. I got it sitting right there. The manure I have sitting in my truck. And the carbon is what I go and, and collect because in the spring, we have a lot of brown material out and about. You can substitute sawdust or wood chips for this carbon but then you reduce this one-third to maybe one-tenth. Now, in the start, you're going to be mixing this one, beer, one wheelbarrow at a time, and you're going to only pile this five to six foot high. If you go much higher, the weight of the pile will squeeze the oxygen out of the bottom, and you're going to build a pile like a pyramid. This is called the, what I call the, and this is kind of funny, I call it the compost angle of repose. The angle of repose is normally referred to in a volcano. You see the volcano is like a pyramid like this and the dust will only take such, such an angle. If it gets it's steeper than what it can hold together it's going to fall apart it'll slump so that's the angle compost angle report and it's pretty close to that 
and it's going to be five or six foot high at the base. If you go five or six foot high and you're using three square yards, it's going to be approximately five or six foot in diameter at the bottom. Okay, now what you're going to do is you're going to pile this together one wheelbarrow at a time. Mixing the ingredients. Okay, wheelbarrow of carbon, wheelbarrow of grains, wheelbarrow of manure. Repeat. In the in the beginning, you might do, you know, two to build a pile the width of it. But you really don't have to. If you pile one on top of the other, it'll just naturally fall off. So one beer at a time until you get this thing built. Once it's built, and in the center of the pile, you know, once you get a foot or two foot high, you know, you want to put in some type of a a uh, igniter, which could be, you know, fish carcasses. If you go fishing, you know, maybe some rotted meat. Discard, discarded meat, let's say discarded meat, that sounds more appealing. <laughs> or in the case where, you, where I'm using all of these um, overwintered kitchen scraps, that's pretty good too. You might be able to get it done on that. Now if you're into a season where you're growing, grow comfrey. Comfrey is a great igniter. Man, you got to plant comfrey just because you want to compost it. There's a lot of nitrogen in comfrey comfrey and it will kick off an aerobic compost pile all on its own okay so now you've built your pile now you're gonna wait four days then you're gonna flip it outside to the inside and what you're gonna do is you're gonna be working here's that let's say we're looking down at the pile here Actually, it should be brown because it'll be a brown color, right? <laughs> Again, if you want to watch a Hollywood production, you better watch somebody else. So this is the top of the pile. This is the base of the pile. And what I do is I work that foot or two along the edges. That isn't working. So I just work that edge here around the pile, and that's the inside of the new pile. So I'm flipping that over. And then I get to working on the rest of this, and I'll still work kind of outside the inside. I'll take all the outside of these segments, throw it on, and then all of a sudden I got this little pile left, and it's it is hot. I mean, it'll be steaming hot. That's how hot it gets. It steams. And then you're working that over the top of this material that wasn't working. You're going to keep doing that. So you're going to do that in four days. And then thereafter, you're going to do it two days. Let's see. I'm going to put this up here a little bit. So then after that, after after four days, then you're going to do it every two days until it's finished. And it should be finished in 18 days if you don't add anything. I've been doing a lot of experimenting where I continue to add because I want more elements into my pile. And I've, I've had it going already for, I think, close to two months before it finally lost its energy. Okay, I'm going to talk about uh, a couple of other ingredients that you can buy. Now, they become an input, but you're using them so sparingly that you can, I mean, you buy them once and they could last for a decade or two decades even. It depends on how much you buy. But one is kelp. And the primary ingredient in kelp that you want to be thinking about is iodine. There are places, there are soils that have a shortage of iodine. So that's going to definitely help that. Plus, kelp has a lot of other elements. The next is green sand. That will give you the elements of ancient oceans. And then we have azomite. That's the elements of inner earth. And I'll put the the kelp. I'm probably putting in a gallon per pot per three yard pile. So if you buy, you know, 50 pounds, that'll last you 10 years. 
if you only do one pile a year. I'm doing one pile a year right now. Uh, green sand, I put in a, a quart. Nazamite, I'm putting in a pint. I'm not testing anything. I don't know how well it's working. That's just my instincts. Okay, some hot shot scientist that has all this equipment that they can measure the little things. Wants to study it? Well, study it and let us know how it works. So I seen it was off the screen. This is azomite right here. Azomite. That's how you spell it. Azomite. And I put a pint in for a three yard pile. So my piles are three yard piles. And by doing this flipping every two days, when you start with three yards, you're going to end with three yards. All anaerobic piles will will reduce to a third of what you started with. So what a benefit to doing this extra work. And one other thing I got to think about here. Um, oh, okay. If you take this three yards of material and you use it judiciously, so you have a plant here and growing, and you take some of this compost and you just put it around the base of this plant, you're being careful with it, you're not just building rows out of it or beds out of the compost like I do, but you're being careful with it. Three yards will feed three people for a year. So you're going to think about the 16 or 20 hours you're going to put into this pile and realize the depth of the return from that 20 hours of work. A whole year of vegetables. And you can there, there's ways of doing this for trees too where you add, after you're done with this 18 days, you put in a, yard, um, a half a yard of, of uh, sawdust and leave it sit. Put a tarp over it and leave it sit there for a couple weeks. Now the fungi starts to be growing in the pile, and now that's the perfect amendment for trees. So uh, that's our story here. How to grow food fast. Okay, I just gave you the idea how to do it. Now I'll link the couple of videos in the description and uh, man I wish you luck because I think we got a lot of problems coming in this country and the faster you you get yourself down to the bottom which is actually in the soil growing food the faster you're going to be able to start your trajectory back up to a successful happy life. Okay thanks for watching.